Hello, it's me, Jess. Welcome to my channel. And today we are doing a lovely, wonderful, juicy reading on how are you interesting, different, special, unique, my stomach, you guys will not pipe down. I just, I've just eaten. So um, we're all getting situated over here and I've restarted this video thrice. <laughs> and we're just, me and my stomach are introducing this video together. So I'm super sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're doing a reading on what makes you interesting, different, unique, special in a way that's good and a way that is appreciated. Okay, so pile number one, this is very interesting. So there's some kind of a trope here and I don't know what it's called, but it's, I feel like as a backdrop to this pile, cause I think some of you definitely are asking about a more personal relationship where there's like a love interest thing that is involved here. But others of you, I think you're asking about a boss or like the head of some kind of creative organization that might bankroll different artistic or creative projects. Maybe they produce songs or music videos or um, art gallery shows, something here like this, where there's, there's like a distinct, distinguishing uh, the merit or the value of of some something or someone and like the quality that they bring now um regardless of if this is a more personal thing um a professional thing or some mixture of both like i said the the backdrop here is the same i'm going to do my best to like talk talk in a way that makes sense for both but you are seen as somebody who is like a bell character from Beauty and the Beast, regardless of your gender. And you know how like in that movie, there's the the three girls and right they're they do their makeup and hair. They always look really nice. They wear pretty dresses and they really are fawning all over Gaston, but he's not very interested in them. Instead, he wants Belle, who is more practical, pragmatic, down to earth. Um, she likes to read. She's more of an intellect and she wants something else for her life. And so because of that, he is viewing her as a challenge, but she kind of doesn't really want anything to do with him. And I feel like take that however it resonates, but I feel like that's the general backdrop. So there could be, a bit of that dynamic where you're a challenge. Um, another movie that comes straight to mind is the movie Chalet Girl, which if you like rom-coms, you'll probably like that movie. It also involves snowboarding, um, but there's that kind of a dynamic there as well. Some of you might even be more of a tomboy um, if you're a girl, something, something like that, where maybe you come off as more practical, pragmatic, more in touch with your masculine side in a good way, like for sure. So you, I think there's also been a transformation in the way that this person is viewing you, but I also think they're picking up on something very astute because you yourself have grown, have transformed. You kind of have, um, like I, I was saying in another reading, you have ugly duckling energy where, um, you started from the bottom maybe, or cause you're not seen as somebody who has family connections or um, like a lot of money behind them. Instead, maybe you were even seen as a bit of a rebel, but in the shadow attribute before. Rejects legitimate authority, which your person sees themselves as a legitimate authority. And they very well could be like, they could have the title, the credentials, whatever it is. This could be a person that, like I said, allocates money, time, resources, to developing talent or something like that. So I think in the past you were seen as rejecting legitimate authority out of anger or just rebelling out of peer pressure or fashion. Basically you were seen as not accepting this person's authority because you were like petulant, but whatever the reason was, it wasn't considered a wise reason. Like it wasn't for anything, any good reason. It was because you were less than, you didn't see clearly whatever. Not that you wanted something different or you didn't share the vision or um, something like that. But you are, I can see that you are a strong individual person. That's just what it is. And I feel like that's what all of this boils down to. But your individuality, the way that this person relates to your individuality has changed over time because I feel like it was misnomered is how it's coming through in my brain. There was a misunderstanding. This person didn't quite understand what it was that they were looking at and what it was that they were looking at was beauty, value, and something that was in process. So I don't know if this person has a very 
very fixed oriented mindset where they're used to um, getting a read on something or someone and thinking that that's finite, like whatever it was, they got a read on it, they've categorized it, they've labeled it, they put it in whatever bin it goes in in their mind, and that's how they're going to relate to it for all of time. And your energy cannot be understood that way. For sure, it can't, because you've always been in process. I feel like you didn't maybe have more traditional things. Again, like if this is your art that this person's relating to, then you didn't go down a traditional path with your art. You didn't have maybe a lot of financial support for your art, because that's another thing that this person is realizing. I want you to know that like they're seeing the value in you now that um, they're starting to get it. They're starting to see your vision, where it is that you're going. And I think this person feels that you need some type of like backing, maybe patrons, some kind of like support, some kind of lubrication to really get yourself out there, get, get your ball rolling. You know, now, now they see that they're realizing that it was maybe an arrogance, um, that blinded them on their part, which again, that's another theme from like the beauty and the beast trope. If that trope has like a specific name and you know it, will you write it in the comment section? Because I'm super curious like what that dynamic is because I'm seeing it so clearly and I know it's it's got to be something that um, has been outlined. But yeah, so this person is realizing that they were a bit beastly, regardless if this is a male or a female. They're a bit beastly, um, they're arrogant, and it blinded them to true beauty and true value in their life. So I feel like this has had a profound impact here on this person. And... Now the, you're also seen as somebody who's like studious or diligent, really diligent. I feel like, um, the struggle that you have been through that has made you what it is that you are is very, very apparent to this person. And that's what I mean by you're in your masculine element more than other people who are around in a really good way. Meaning like you take some kind of action, even if you start from the bottom, even if you've got to like chip away at something slowly over time, you are going to continue to push through in order to grow and develop that. You don't want somebody to just come in and hand you something or like, here's, here's everything that you ever wanted tied up, wrapped up in a bow like that maybe wouldn't even mean that much to you because you like knowing that you busted your hump for getting whatever value out of your craft or yourself. Cause for some of you, you are your own craft and maybe you have come from a family where there wasn't a lot of tradition or money or it wasn't a traditional family situation in some way. So now this person's kind of fascinated by you and I feel like I feel like you have turned away from this person though. Like you felt degraded. You felt like this person didn't understand you. Maybe they had they had written you off in some type of way. And I feel like you moved away, which this person maybe in the past mislabeled as like a young, youthful, rebellious nature. But um, you are just independent and you are an individual and you it lends itself to a type of creativity. I also think you might be a person where you don't feel like you owe it to people to show your value right away or you want to protect your value because you're seen as somebody who has something actually very valuable and for you to grow it, like you've had to learn how to protect it, you know, and that all of a sudden is making sense to this person. They're seen as having some kind of higher cup and just notice like, okay, look, look at these cards all here. Cause what do they have in common, right? Like this person's kind of watching you trying to get a read on what it is that they are looking at. Um, right. And I think maybe for some of you, it's like they don't know if you are dangerous in some way because of your rebellious nature um, or or how you would respond to them. Um, but they're starting to, they want to poke at you, you know, I think just to see what you would do. Um, but yeah, see how like they're hiding and there's this cup. Now, I can't help but notice the three of cups and the three of cups. So this energy that they're used to being around or dealing with, dating, working with, however your situation applies and whatever it is that you're asking about in your mind, the energies that are around them have been very feminine in their nature. They don't necessarily need to be female, but they have that feminine yin quality of trying to pull on this person's energy, on their resources, perhaps on their heartstrings. Although if... If they're trying to pull on this person's heartstrings, I feel like they're going about whatever this is in the wrong way. That's just not how you get across to this person. And you probably don't care to do that. I think you're focused on your own thing, which has this person noticing that quality to you. 
Um, but the energy that was around before, like I said, it's very feminine and I feel like it's just at this point, it's very much the same. I think it's beautiful, whatever it is, it's very beautiful. Um, but this is mercury and cancer energy. So I feel like maybe people try to talk to this person to, um, they talk maybe about family. It's in a more social situation, you know, where maybe these people are of some type of family background that gives them wealth, resources, access to different social events. Um, they get to like have nice clothes and they get to dress up and they get to do their hair and they get to do their nails. They don't have to worry about like, you know, getting in there and working and, you know, pushing through and having that be a drain on their time. They more have social, their lives are more socially aspected. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm doing a bad job of describing this. Whereas yours is more you have like a work focus. There's some, some place that you're trying to get to and, um, you're doing it by yourself. That's kind of the vibe here. Now, I also, I feel like these people are always trying to get this person's attention by, um, beautifying, by trying to stand out in some type of way, by leaning into their creativity. And I feel like when people look at this person, they are in awe of this person. There's a certain type of longing. Um, and other people look at this person and try to figure out how it is that they can manipulate this person. But there's an energy of like the small trying to overcome, overtake the large here with this person. I feel like a lot of people might want to get this person like if this is a romantic thing you're asking about, they might want to have this person's baby or have a baby with this person, have a family with this person in order to control them or um, to get some kind of social standing, family standing, something like that. But you're not really like this at all. I actually feel like you're very boundaried with this person. You are more focused on yourself in a way because I think you are you're not seen as looking at this person. You're seen as having worries or doubts about yourself. And I feel like this person sees there's two aspects of you. And so right off the bat, maybe this person recognized that you were of lower social standing in terms of like, um, you know, your family or something where you, where you come from, you're seen as like working class or business class. Whereas like there's social light kind of energy around this person. And you were seen as somebody who was maybe a little insecure, a little unsure of themselves. Somebody who there is, it's interesting because I feel like there is a, an understanding or recognition that you collaborate in order to protect yourself. I don't know if that will make sense to you, but the way that you collaborate, you kind of block your heart off as a type of shield or something, something like that, but that you have been planning or thinking about having some kind of new beginning for yourself. And maybe this has started to happen or this person sees that you are starting to put the frameworks in for it to happen because this person sees that there's another aspect to you. It's like on the one hand, you're the four of pentacles, but on the other hand, you're the hierophant. So, which makes me feel that you have some type of authority, but it's not like a worldly authority. It's not in terms of assets or anything concrete around you. Like if this is an art thing, say it's like you don't have a record deal or a record label, but you are going your own way and maybe you're building, you're putting out your own CD, you're, you know, or however that goes. Maybe if you're an artist, it's like you don't have any wealthy person backing you so that you can do this, but you're still putting out your own stuff like you're the one building it so you're the one in control of it but you're also the one that's going to reap the benefits if that makes sense and so there's an acknowledgement that you are persistent for sure persistent and that you know what it is that you're doing and that you have a type of intuition about you and i think this person feels that you're a bit of a puzzle or a bit of a conundrum because and we've seen this energy come out recently where it's like there's traits that you have where maybe you're a little shy or timid, but then when you get in your element, you are an authority. At your captivating, you speak with authority, your whole demeanor changes, you come online, and the value of you is readily apparent. And I just can't help but see that there's a similar vibe that is coming from both of these cards because the keys are in front here blocking off, but the, the pentacles are in front there blocking off. There's almost this acknowledgement that you don't need anybody else to really collaborate with. Um, the key word there being need, you know, I think you play well with others, pile number one. Um, but there was something like that was important for you to do as an individual and to do it your way because nobody else could really see the value in it or 
um, there at first. But once you started to build it, then other people are coming around you, but you're in charge. Something like that, where it's like it's flipped a dynamic, you know. Um, yeah, you're very much seen as an authority. Maybe even someone with a type of wisdom, but it's like intuitive wisdom or creative wisdom, something like that. And you just, you don't answer to money. You don't answer to status. You just, there. you have a higher goal, a higher mission. I think a lot of you like your alone time here as well. Um, and I think that you, there's a quality to you where you're like a thinker. And so, um, and I think also there's an aspect to you where you're a lot more casual. Like I was saying, maybe some of you, you have like a tomboy energy, but that's like, you know, if you're a female type person, it could just be that you're more casual than the people like, I don't know. I'm just getting that whenever people are around this person, they try to like dress up and in a very feminine way. So they're paying attention to the details and they're, um, I don't know. They're trying to make themselves stand out for sure. But then in making themselves trying to stand out, they all kind of look the same. Does that make sense? Because each one of these women is so beautiful and is wearing like a very nice dress, but they almost look like they're connected. Like it's all just one in the same person. And then, you know, they all tried to like decorate themselves in a way that's beautiful and interesting and unique, but then everybody was doing that around this person. So then it would just kind of became common, if that makes sense. And I also feel that this person may not take, um, how do I want to put this? maybe they don't take relationships all that seriously or um, they're just, everything is the same. Like everybody kind of thinks that they're standing out to this person, but then they're really not. So everything's the same. And weirdly enough, I feel like you, you, um, you're not in unsure of yourself. Maybe you were in the past, but you're starting to get your legs about you. You are, you have a kind of quiet confidence about you and like you're, you're just diligent and you didn't like need this person or something. So now they really have their mind, their like attention, their focus on you. And in some ways they feel like you're better than them at what you do or like if you're in the same field as this person or um, that you are, yeah, but that now you're out of reach. So now they're trying to figure out like how you could be so unsure of certain things but so confident in other things. They don't know how to place that if that makes sense this person feels like once they get behind your your boundaries there's like a whole beautiful lush garden of eden there and that where you are where you come alive and where you become free if that makes sense yeah um so they just they're curious about you they want to keep discovering you you're interesting you're new you're different and a lot of you might not feel that way because i think for a lot of you there's a lot of like hard work diligent focused energy that's coming from your side and with you um because this person i think lives a more traditional life but they're kind of like you in a type of way i don't know if you know this about this person because maybe you met them at a point in their journey where they are the big boss man or the big boss lady but they have, I think, experienced a lot of competition in their own life. And so they're like really good at leadership and creativity and juking and driving and being like very dynamic. And they see this type of quality in you that like you're on your own come up as well. And I think they really like that. They admire it. They respect it. And I think they want to speak to you in order to try and put the puzzle of you together, you know? I think this person's realizing that you had your reasons for challenging their authority to affect social change, reject spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. So a big aspect of this, if it's not a creative project or a work project that you're working on something you believe in very much, um, it also very much could be yourself. But I think that your, your spirituality, your spiritual beliefs, or if you relate to this more as like you have some sort of code of ethics that you really stick to and you don't deviate from it. You are no hypocrite, pile number one. You really are not. Like you you know what it is you believe and how you believe things should go about it. You don't want to take shortcuts about things. Even if something takes a little bit of time, you're willing to, to um, you're willing to put in that time. And I do think there's something about your spiritual beliefs where you are, I think you're quite intuitive and you you just reject the, any spiritual system or belief that doesn't serve inner needs that doesn't sit right with you, you know? Um, and maybe it's not even forever. It's just until you chew on it a little more. You're not one to just 
you're very independent. That's what I think it is. You're not one to just fall in line, you know, or change yourself in order to become more palpable in order to try and call favor from this person or really from anyone else. I think you want to have like a genuine spark, a genuine vibe, like, okay, I know that you see me and you see my worth and you see my value and you see what it is I'm trying to accomplish here and you believe in that too, whether or not that's you trying to accomplish something with yourself or in a project that you're doing. So yeah, like what what makes you different is that you are somehow smaller than this person. This person kind of thinks that they're a big person, like a big boss person or something. And I think they can be kind of arrogant, but tarot happens on a gradient. So if arrogant is too strong of word, then maybe it's just like hard headed or matter of fact, but um, on the more extreme ends of things, then yeah, maybe this person can be arrogant. I definitely think they have to be discerning. Like that's just a quality that comes with whatever position they're in is they have to be discerning with where they put their energy and their time. They've got to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff. And so with you, you were smaller than them in some type of way, but in a way that they feel that they respect it and they actually could stand to learn something from you. They also, there's a baseline of friendship where this person feels like you understand each other and um, that they wanna give to you and they wanna help you transform and they wanna be a part of your life and of your journey. They see you in process and in progress now. Whereas before, I think they took a snapshot of you because again, this person may, it's funny because they're very dynamic themselves. I just, for some reason, don't think that they turn that outward to other people. Like they understand that they're dynamic and that they have had to work for things. But especially the fem- if you're asking about someone and they're a male and you're um, like the more feminine one, like you're a female or you're the more feminine one in the dynamic, then the types of like feminine energy that this person's used to being around is very... Um, all the same. They just feel like it's all the same. It's beautiful and it's sweet and it's sensitive and they like to talk about their emotions, their family, maybe their children, their home life, um, the, the family that they come from. They could have like family ties and then they always end up feeling controlled by them whenever they're in a relationship with them because they ultimately these types want something from this person like status or something like that. So but you are independent and this person feels like they just want to help you because you aren't trying to get anything out of them. You're just doing it yourself. So this person, first of all, thinks you're incredibly competent, which I feel like they're starting to realize that's some kind of a linchpin to them not feeling held down, trapped, controlled, um, something like that. Yeah, that's what they like about you. Um, A lot of you guys could be loners or like where you stand kind of off to the side. You're fine, like you do collaborate, but there's a part of you that's always kind of at a distance, you know? Um, Or that is very boundaried, very obviously boundaried. And this person does think that um, maybe you, yeah, like you're, you're not as confident as the other people, but that you should be more confident than the other people that are around because you are building things up, which makes me think that for some of you guys, where you're at in your journey, building yourself or building some kind of um, project that you have, like your inner dialogue with yourself, the way you relate to yourself hasn't exactly caught up. You know, you still feel like the ugly duckling on the inside. You talk to yourself like that. Like nobody understands me. Everyone thinks I'm a duck. And I think I'm a duck too, because I never seen a swan before, you know, metaphorically, but on the outside, I think now you're a swan and it's just almost like your inner dialogue hasn't caught up to your outer dialogue. And this person wants to be a part of that. So yeah, um, that's, that's what I'm getting. I could totally see how this could be a work thing or a personal thing. So just take it however it resonates, I guess. But, um, just to remind you of like the things I was kind of channeling chalet girl, the movie, um, this is sort of a beauty and the beast kind of a dynamic. And also, uh, the song feel like shh by Tate McRae. I feel like maybe this person Um, feels that way. And now I'm getting, because I said that, I'm getting for you that um, your side of it might be um, You Broke Me First by Tate McRae. That could be the conversation that's kind of going on, especially if this is a love interest um, or a more personal interest that you got going on here. So that's what I have for you guys, pal number one. If it resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.
interesting. Okay, so pile number two. How are you, how is your relationship, how are you different, interesting, unique, and appreciated within this relationship dynamic? Well, this is a very, very intense relationship dynamic and the quality of this relationship dynamic that you share with this person is very much going to depend on how evolved and healthy each of these partners are because this intensity can be channeled and if if it's the case where um, you have two very healthy people here, which I feel like that's what these cards are saying, this could be that level of a relationship where it's like no other relationship that you have, have or either one of you has had for that matter is going to even remotely compare to the relationship that you share with this person. Um, it's so intense. It's hugely transformative. And I'm hearing the lyrics. It's from an NF song, but it's like, you let me be myself. You don't control me. Even though there's beauty here, even though there's power here, there's all these things that can typically lead people who are insecure with themselves or who are not on a path of self-actualization to devolve into weird power games, um, self-pity, um, drama triangle stuff. I feel like with the two of you, what this is saying is that you, you can rise above that here. Um, now, this then um, dynamic, like when it comes out in, as a trope, I feel like this is clearly Hades and Persephone. There's a quality to your relationship that people don't understand on the outside. And honestly, the two of you might not think right away that you make much sense together, but then it's like as you start to get to know each other, um, you start to realize like how much each of you has in common. It's almost like this is a yin yang relationship where it's like, well, one of you is on the outside. The other one is like private and protected on the inside. And then what the, uh, and it's, it's vice versa, if that makes sense. And you only discover that when you start to um, really delve in and get to know each other. Now, I feel like there's a pretty instant attraction on both sides in this relationship in a physical sense. Like there's a type of magnetic attraction. And this is the type of energy that you don't want to go around playing with. I kind of get the sense that if this relationship can not be channeled in a sexual way or in a romantic way, then somebody here could end up getting really tore up. And I feel like it would be the Venus person, just confused, whipped around by it, not really understanding why they're feeling that way. Um, you know, because that like, this is a type of relationship that requires a certain amount of depth. Um, and I'm hearing the word plumbing, like just a certain amount of plumbing in order to really like get this moving in the way that it needs to plumb out the old plumb out the, the the garbage all the muck in order to be able to bloom and blossom into something truly truly beautiful this is the kind of relationship where i feel like you are always looking for each other and it's like once you meet each other you both do recognize that it's valuable what you have and that you can't just go out on the street corner and find something else that works in the way that this does i get the sense though this is the type of connection where it's like you wake up every morning and you wonder how it works like every single day you're like this shouldn't work at all it defies all logic but somehow it works perfectly even like in a very dynamic way i feel like the energy is always moving between the two of you you. The conversation is funny because it's always moving between the two of you, but then I feel like you both can be thinkers, detectives, you can kind of be withdrawn. So you fall into a very comfortable silence here as well too. I think both of you are very driven people as well. Um, and somehow like you're going in the same direction and it's really beautiful. It's really perfect. There's a sense that this relationship can accomplish things that people don't really think is possible. But at the same time, it's also not very showy. Like people might not understand when they look at the two of you together, how deep, how loving, how intense, um, how deeply transformative your relationship has been to each one of your lives. Um, they just, they wouldn't really be able to get it because this relationship is all about like actually doing and experiencing feeling. It's a very sensual, very sexual relationship when it's channeled right. And it, that it has that quality. It's all about the doing, the, the actual feeling, the actual experiencing rather than focused on the externals of how things look. It, it's focused more on how things operate. Now, one thing I find really interesting is this situation right here, because this is what I mean when I'm saying it almost feels like, even for the two of you, like how does this work, right? There could be a status difference here. There could be an age difference. Um, and on the face of things, each one of you sees what is on the inside in the other person, if that makes sense. So what I'm getting here though, because this is Venus and Cancer, this is Venus and Aries, right? 
This is an energy that squares each other, right? You think it would clash. I think that um, each one of you is seeing the other in each one of these energies. But what's interesting about your relationship is that you are both individuals. You know, I, I get the sense that um, someone here, I feel like this is your person that either you're asking about. Um, they date people that are obsessed with themselves, all about themselves all about their own self image, the status of the, their relationship. And there's a lot of arguments and there's a lot of fighting, which then leads their part, their previous partners to fall into a state of self pity to the point where they would call it an addiction to self pity down here with this martyr energy. Like, Oh, I do all of this for you. I do all of that because this energy was never channeled properly. They feel like they're always at odds with their previous partners who wanted something more, um, maybe like, I don't know, traditional or something. And then this person wanted to express more of an independence. What's different about this relationship is both of you have both of these parts within you. Like I said, I feel like it's not readily acknowledged by either one of you or the outside world. Like you both, you present on the outside as though you are going to have that same kind of a clash, but you actually don't because whoever looks like they're more cancerian, more family oriented, more soft, more sweet, they actually have an Aries core, you know, where it's like they're independent, they're fiery, they're down for adventure, they're down for travel. Um, sometimes they need time alone and then vice versa. Whoever um, appears more Aries, like more dynamic, commanding, always on the move, um, liking to move on to new things. They have a core where they actually appreciate having like a steady home environment, something that's very loving. And so so between the two of you in this relationship, you ping the ball back and forth pretty easily. You fall into periods where your home bodies, you fall into periods where you're external. Um, I feel like whenever the two of you speak, like it's, you have a lot to say to each other and it's always a really deep and very transformative conversation that you have. And then, but at the same time, like you're cool not speaking like sometimes both of you get wrapped up in your heads, get wrapped up in ideas. Cause like you're both very driven and you have things that you want to explore, um, here on your own. And somehow between these two things happening, it ends up refining the individual self-expression of both parties, you know, where they feel, you both feel rejuvenated and supported in this relationship, even though it's not showy. Like I feel like a showier relationship that maybe both of these people have, I'm kind of getting that maybe both of these people involved here have experienced that type of relationship in the past where it was all about image. It was all about everything looks fine on the surface, but that was at an immense cost to self. Whereas here it, it's, it's not showy on the surface, but it's super intense, deeply transformative. And it ends up giving each one of these people like a lot of energy and a lot of clarity and clarification on who they are. Now this, the beginning of this relationship, I feel like especially could be very, very intense. And I think that's pretty much in line with the other relationships that these people have had, especially very sexually intense, but the sexual attraction between the pair of you involved in this, that can be sustained like in a way where it would be a lot more work um, in a, di in a different kind of relationship. But I feel like at the beginning though, there could be some intensity because there's a clarification of values that's going on and you, the ways that you connect, it's on a really, really deep level. And it could be that you connect through a lot of your plutonic issues. So traumas, things you don't like to talk about, um, with other people, things you might feel embarrassed or ashamed about to share with other people. This is the type of relationship where you feel like I let you see the darkest parts of me and you love me anyway. Not that you like are okay with everything I did. You can understand that some of the things that I did were maybe messed up at the time, or you can understand how that wasn't an ideal situation. You're not like, you know, um, like belittling anything, but you love and appreciate that you can see and you appreciate the transformation that each one of you has undergone before you even met each other. And then the transformation that you continue to engage in after, I feel like there's a lot of, there could be a lot of travel that's involved here in this as well. Um, but it feels like travel with a purpose. And that just could be because like I said, you switch back and forth in your modes where like it, it feels like, Hey, we got to travel. That is a purpose. We need to do it. Like it could be that it also could be somebody here has to travel for work. If someone does have to travel for work, that is completely understood by the other person. And, um, they're like celebrated whenever they get home. It's like, Oh my gosh, yay. I miss you. But the other one's cool with being, um, left alone, you know? And, they're, where they're not like, oh, woe is me, self-pity, self-pity, because like 
this other person has to do things that aren't like all about them, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like this martyr energy, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause, the cause here is the relationship where both of you are learning that transcendent nature of being of service to oneself, where like, it's almost like when you submit yourself to each other here, it, it feels strengthened. It doesn't feel like you're losing anything. Where I feel like in the past, um, when one or both of you would placate yourself or submit yourself, you know, you would, you would take the, take the, the L in a way. And it felt like, um, it, it diminished you in a way. Whereas when you submit to one another, this is a husband wife relationship. That's what this is that the energy, the mantle of husband, you know, cause a man does not a husband make a woman does not a wife make like it's a mantle. It's a spiritual path and husbands and wives can behave with each other in ways that are different. And it feels rejuvenating. It feels strengthening when a husband and wife does it rather than when I'm talking about like not just on, not just a, a titular husband and wife. I'm talking about the energy, the soul bond of a husband and wife rather than if a man just submits to a woman because, you know, he's afraid of her self-pitying nature. He's afraid of conflict. Same thing for a woman. If a woman um, has to submit to a masculine nature that she doesn't naturally respect, you know, because she's afraid he's going to self-pity or start a fight that doesn't produce the same results, right? So, but this is a relationship that truly can produce those results. And I feel like when I say this, I want to be clear with my language too, because when I say that this isn't a showy relationship, the two of you are attractive, I think. Um, and you're seen as an attractive pair, but there's a sense of privacy and there's a sense that people don't know what really truly goes on because you don't really care to put on a dog and pony show for everybody else around. They can kick rocks for all that either of you are concerned. You're actually focused on doing the work. This is a functioning, healthy relationship. I feel like you are seen as well as someone who's very, very skillful and somebody who gets off their behind and actually does something like you don't fall into a woe is me self pity. Um, the world is unfair. Why won't it just give me what I want? You are skillful. You are influential in your energy. You have the ability to go out and make something happen for you. And this person actually really does respect that here. I feel like there could be a little bit of hesitation to get involved with each other in this um, relationship just because of the intensity of it. And somebody here is like very spiritual, if not both of you. And I, it almost feels like some, I feel like the feminine energy in this pile is like very afraid to open Pandora's box in regards to her feelings for the more masculine energy involved in this pile, just because, um, there's a feeling of being a, the, the intensity here is sensed. And I feel like the feminine energy could have been in abusive relationship dynamics in the past and is afraid to, like I said, open Pandora's box because she can sense the intensity of it. But if you are a more higher vibrational masculine person and you're very skillful and you're aware of your own stuff and you can, you know, you're very, um, cognizant, all of that, like the results are going to be much, much different. So there's kind of a clinging here of past energy in almost in a sense. And there could be something with a parent or, or an early home environment that you both are able to talk about in a very clear cut way. Cause with that NF song that I'm getting, that song's called on my mind. I, no, got you on my mind. It starts out. It's like, um, I lost my, or you lost your dad, girl. I know how that feels. I lost my mom trying to deal with that still, you know? Um, so it's like, you could connect on eighth house things, deep things, things where it's like you feel like you have an understanding for one another and you're you're seen as like survivors or people who are valuable beautiful the counterpart energy here i'm getting a bit of the wild thornberries kind of a vibe like um you know where they have a family and they but they travel around and they're interesting and they live like a different life but it is it's kind of like the the hades persephone story you know where they see something different in one another that other people don't see and it just sort of works and there's a rhythm to it. If that makes sense. I feel like the feminine energy matures and like embraces her femininity and the masculine energy gets to embrace his more playful side. Both of you have each of these sides here as well, where 
Um, you're strong, but then you can also be playful and foolish. And because of this, I feel like when one of you wants to let go a little bit, let loose a little bit, be more playful, be more foolish, be more fun, the other person can kind of play parent, you know, um, not in a bad way, just, you know, they're there as a grounding, strong presence. And then when the roles need to switch, then it can switch and both of you can switch hit in that way, which is really, really appreciated. And there's, I think there's trust here as well, um, which might feel different. Um, with all this intensity for there to be trust, like that could feel very different as well. Um, nobody feels trapped in their own home, which might've been a theme for somebody here. Um, the home, there's a lot of activity. There's, um, it's dynamic, it's happy. Um, and there is a lot of activity here. Maybe you guys like to entertain or maybe there's just a lot of things you like to do around the house, like your hobbies. I get that this is like a, these are people with hobbies and skill sets. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of learning that goes on. I feel like before, like the relationships, the partners before would fight and produce confusion and make this person that you're asking about here feel off balance, feel off kilter. They didn't quite understand exactly what was going wrong. And then with you, it just clicks. Yeah. So this is a big change. It's a big transformation, this relationship. Honestly, this is like you will, I feel like there's a sense, this person that you're asking about, when they look back on the other relationships they had, even though they were probably with people who were um, out there trying to shine their own light, they were so focused on themselves and everything. They focused on the image of them. I feel like they asked themselves, like, what did I ever see in any of those people? Like that just didn't make any sense. There's like almost, there's little to no attraction to anyone who's like really come before because it's just seen as not really worth it. Like all the trouble, you know? Um, yeah. So this is like super intense. And I feel like there's a lot of blessings, a lot of love, a lot of growth, um, a lot of travel, a lot of expansion and a lot of charity. I think this is a couple who, um, works hard to get themselves to a place and then they are very, very giving from the right place as well. Again, not in a showy way either. So yeah. And there's a good balance of give and take, but it comes from this place of each of you being able to switch hit. I feel like this person you're asking about, they, which I'm strongly feeling like is a more masculine energy that is plutonic in a way, um, reserved, but also very deep. But there's a sense that like they never had someone who could hold up their own paddle in the ping pong game and so that you they could get a good volley going but here you ping the bong back the the ball back and forth um with one another and it's super appreciated it really really is and it it, it produces a huge amount of transformation between the two of you and this trust isn't just about like sexual trust and fidelity. It's about like, I trust you to be competent or I trust that you, um, like whatever it is that you say you're going to do, you're going to do it. And I trust you to be able, like, you know, the operating manual of your own self and you know how to take responsibility for your own self and pull your own self back up. And so both of you, there's, it's beautiful because it's stable, but then it allows for each one of you to cycle and go through fluctuations, which I feel like um, maybe is actually important here. You're also seen as someone who is nurturing in a skillful way, in like a very mind oriented way. And that's supported here as well, too. Um because this is eclipse energy. And so this moon is gonna eventually move move out of the way. So if you are a person where um, you know you have intense emotions or intentional emotional swings, that's gonna be understood and supported in this relationship that you have with this person. So yeah, this is beautiful. This is what I have for you guys, pile number two. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.
Hi, pile three. So I just finished your reading and then all of a sudden something so simple and clear and succinct just clicked in for me about your person. I really do feel like this is the key to understanding this person. It's like the Rosetta Stone between the two of you, which I feel like that has, you've been looking for this here with this person. So I just want to tell you this at the the beginning of this reading so that everything I say after the reading is going to make so much more sense. And that is that your person that you're asking about, they operate primarily on animal instinct. And, you know, I know when I say that maybe it comes off like, okay, well, that could be condescending because when we think of someone as being you know, animalistic, that sounds like, oh, they're subhuman in some type of way. That's not how it's coming across here with your person. This feels like something forged in the fires of hell. And it feels like a source of power here to this person in a way that makes them nobody's fool. Because this person does not put, I feel like hardly any stock in words, in what people say, like ever. I feel like, um, but especially not at the beginning of a relationship with a person where they're trying to figure out even if they want to have a relationship with someone, they operate in that instinctual realm. Okay. And I feel like that's where people go wrong with this person. Um, because, and maybe this is how you've gone wrong because I feel like I feel like you've asked yourself like, well, how do I connect with this person? How do I communicate that I'm not a threat, that I love them, that I want to take care of them? You know, something very like my simple intention towards this person. How do I do that? Well, most people's brains are going to spit out a very limited um, answer to that question um, that's in the realm of verbal communication. And I cannot remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it may be something that you want to look into where it's something like 67% of communication is nonverbal. And then I think it's 8% of communication is tone. And then, um, whatever, when you math that out, like is left over, then that's verbal communication. And, um, and I feel like the schema for this person, especially at the beginning of the relationship, this might level out as you get to know them. It's they, this, they put even more stock than 67% in those nonverbals, meaning, um, so when you ask yourself how you can communicate to this person, the sincerity of your intentions and your brain spits out something like very word based, like, okay, well, how am I going to put all my words together in a sentence in a way that's perfect? And is it, well, I want to stay away from that trigger word or that, you know, and you make it this really complicated thing. Um, there, it's also topical where maybe it's like, okay, well, this person likes golf. So, um, I'm going to talk a lot about golf. That's the wrong approach to have with this person. Um, really, when you're thinking about how you can communicate your intention with this person, think about, um, sorry, my stomach's growling. <laughs> See how primal your person is? They're just making me hungry. <laughs> um, food might be a big thing for this person, but um, I feel like, think about if you had a dog, you know, or whatever animal you really like and you've had a lot of experience with, and think about how you communicate Two, like when you get a little puppy, how do you communicate to that puppy that you're a safe person and that you have clear intentions and what your clear expectations are and all of those things because the dog presumably does not speak English or any other human language, you know, with words, but you still find a way not just to communicate yourself, but to build like this beautiful bond and trust, um, right? That loyalty that um, between the two of you. And that's exactly what's here with this person. The potential for that is here. And I feel like this actually mirrors your own like a big soul lesson here that you have for yourself be and it's reminding me of pile number three in the what's ahead in 2022 reading where there was like a huge emphasis on communication figuring out how it is that you need to communicate and it's like figuring out how you're communicating here with this person, which is coming off very much like How to Train Your Dragon, like that movie. I feel like you should totally watch that movie. Um, but figuring out how, how to communicate with this person is going to bring you online with your own potent communicative ability because you might have a very animalistic style as well um, because the 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 feminine energy that in pile number three that I, uh, for the 2022 reading that was ruling over the communication ability. It was fire energy and fire is instinctual. And so some of you guys, if you're like, well, why, yeah, why am I not having success? Maybe this is a bigger thing. Like it's more than just with this person. Um, my stomach just keeps growling. I'm eating after this. Some of you guys like motherhead me and I love it cause I totally need that. But, um, I'm going to eat after this, I swear. But 
if you're like really wondering where the disconnect is, you don't need to learn any more words. Pile number three, I'm hearing you know plenty of words. You know enough of them, <laughs> you're fine. Um, some of you actually do string words together quite well in a very dexterous kind of a form, which, it, but there could be this disembodied energy between tone, I wanna say a voice, but it keeps stopping me because I think some of you do written communication. Um, with this person. So tone is a big one and body language. So making sure it's not, it's not like just making sure that it's in alignment. If you, if you're wanting to learn more about your communication, learn about body language, right? Learn how it is that you're coming across in your nonverbals. It's going to help you not just with this person, but with other people here as well, because this, how to train your dragon energy that I'm getting right between, um, what's his name? Hiccup and yeah, hiccup. It's like a, hiccup in your voice, hiccup and um, toothless. Uh, yeah, like the it's that's the dynamic that's playing out in your external space with this person, but it mirrors the relationship internally that each of you have. And I think that um, once you get that communication, that animalistic nonverbal communication where you're simple in, in your intention and you just, it's not even something I feel you need to do. I think you have this naturally. You're simple in your intentions. If you just figure out how to communicate that, which the key to that is animalistic communication, then everything's just gonna naturally fall into place. And I think you're gonna find this person's dragon pretty toothless in regards to you where there's this, um, this loyalty. Now, another thing I'm getting about this person, I think they're earthy in how, in their love language, right? So I think acts of service, right? Which service oriented energy, there's no um, tit for tat. There's no um, barb, you know? Cause this person, if you give them like a fish, they're looking for the lure, right? They're looking for the lure. They're not, you're like, why won't this person take my fish? And they're like, you know, it's like most people just eat it. And this person's like, I know there's a hook in here somewhere. <laughs> like, you know, um, this fish is way too shiny not to have a hook in it. <laughs> I've been caught before. <laughs> like that's how this person feels. Um, and so if you just understand that, um, and another thing is, um, physical touch might be a big one, but I, I wouldn't just touch this this person, right? Same thing like with a wild animal or something. It's like when, oh, that's it. When they let you touch them, that's like a big, big key here to this for this person. And um, another one is gift giving. But again, like you giving a gift isn't the same as there being like a expectation on the end of it. It's I'm almost picturing you walking by this person and like handing them a chicken, you know? Not like a full chicken, like a chicken nugget or something. Um, because think about this. I want to help you break this down for a second. You've communicated a ton of information in that one gesture. If you just walk by this person and hand them a chicken wordlessly and then continue on your way, what you've communicated is, I know you like chicken. I also like chicken. I have a chicken. I've given you this chicken. Because why? I want you to live a little longer, right? Primates love food especially the girl ones. So if this is like, that's, it's like when you watch about like primates, I don't want to like, again, be condescending to us, but at, we're primates on some level. The girl ones just like food because it's like live a little bit longer. I'm sure the boy ones do too, but that's like part of the communication there. So, um, right. And then you walked away. You didn't say any words. So this person doesn't feel like you're trying to manipulate them. And then you walked away, meaning you're unattached to the outcome. So this manipulation energy that this person's fearing, you just, just demonstrated in a simple action that you're not about any of it, that you're just pretty simple. Hey, when I give you a chicken, it means all the things that I mean, but there's no hook, the hook being the words, right? The, the covert contract that I mentioned at the end, there's no covert contracts here. I'm simple. I'm straightforward. Um, right. There's something about that. Don't make this your communication thing. Don't make it more complex. It's not about the words that you're stringing together and how you're stringing them together. It's about tone. It's about body language. And, and even with those, it's not about like making it this big complex thing. It's just about bringing it in alignment, making sure that what your body is saying, your words are saying. And I'm getting the scene from Aladdin with um, Iago, the parrot, and he's got this sultan on the strings and he's like, here you go, have another cracker, stuff them all the way down your throat. Like, you know, nobody wants a cracker that way. <laughs> I may have wanted to explore the cracker spread, okay? I might've wanted to have a single cracker and then maybe another cracker. But you know, um, be, and I, the reason I'm saying that is because your energy comes off as a teacher energy in the rest of this reading which is beautiful, but it's like, you know, this person wants a cracker and you're like, oh, just take this cracker. I know what's best for you, right? You, you, the tone of that is what's off. Well, I don't know. I gave this person a cracker, but it's like, 
I'm using an extreme example here. I don't believe that this is what a lot of you would be doing, but I think that this person's kind of touchy and it feels that way where it's like this forced energy, which ties me maybe into pile number two, where um, that could be something you very much have in common with this person. Neither of you want to be controlled. And this will be a big key for you in not being controlled is this animal instinct kind of a thing right? Where you don't, this is how this person does not get taken in by charlatans. Maybe some of you have this question is because I'm hearing this person say you could throw a rock and hit a charlatan. Somebody who wants to use big, expressive, passionate, bold words in order to try to manipulate the masses. That's this person just doesn't trust that. Even if you're saying something good, this person just on, wants like an earthy, honest, straightforward. It does what it says on the 10 kind of a situation. And then, and only then are they going to put stock in your words. I feel you're called to be the same way. So with that being said, um, enjoy the rest of your reading. Uh, keep in mind that I'm going to start this reading over because I already filmed that. And I don't know that I'm doing this in the future. <laughs> Bye guys. Huh? Okay. So this is very interesting. Pile number three. What does this person, what about you is interesting, different, or unique um, here? And what, what, what is appreciated about that here in this connection? Everything, everything. And some of you think I'm a filthy liar because you're like, um, no, this person gives me flack at every step of the way. This person is like defensive. Um, they question everything I say, everything I do. Um, they're very, maybe you're seeing them as like childish or petulant, but I'm telling you there's something weird happening in this where it's like the capacity because you have a strong capacity to trigger each other here. Very, very strong. But that same capacity, to trigger one another, um, your, to have your wounds flaring up, to be not on the same page and have a bunch of mis misunderstandings, that can flip seriously 180 degrees into like the most pure, like seamless love. And the reason that that is, is because you are opposites to this person in some way. So I'm hearing the word medicine, like you kind of bring a medicine into this person's life. I feel this person may bring a medicine to you as well. But the thing that's happening here that I find so fascinating is that you speak different languages, but you want the same thing. But it's almost like, it's almost like if you're a different species, you know, that's what it is. So you're your body language cues or things like that, your it doesn't mean the same thing. So one one person's watching the other and they're interpreting their words or their their lack of words, for instance, um, or their body language as threatening or confusing, muddled, and then they're on guard and then the other that puts the other person on guard. Cause I think that it's a it's less of like you're both doing it at the same time, if that makes sense. I kind of feel you're the leader in this situation. So maybe this is why this is important for you to like hear this message because it's almost like it gets started and then once it gets started, um, that ball gets like pinged all around. Do you know what I mean? But it's like if, if that just gets started in a different way, then this is gonna click right in. And I'm truly feeling like you're gonna take a person who has like this, standoffish, doesn't really trust you, wow. Um, yeah, doesn't really trust you is maybe, again, like very push, pushing, giving you a lot of flack is what I'm hearing, just giving you a lot of pushback, um, looking at you questioning, questioningly, not really understanding where it is that you're coming from. You are gonna take this person and they are gonna, they're gonna be eating out of the palm of your hand is what I'm getting. I'm hearing how to tame your dragon here. This is how to, t and I'm hearing your dragon. Um, and now I'm seeing the, um, you know, the dragon from Harry Potter, you know, how Hagrid was always going down to the pub and like getting these crazy dangerous animals from random people. <laughs> That's you, you, you found this like interesting, da like dangerous, like dragon, but you know, it was a baby. It was small. So it was like very, very cute. And other people are like, don't be around that person. Are you kidding? Why do you want to play around with that? And you're like, but it's adorable. <laughs> and, um, now this person is like poofing. They're changing shape. I feel this is a full grown adult person that you're dealing with in their, in their body, right? Like they're matured, but, um, what I'm being shown now is like this person poofs like they're a child and they seem like very innocent and they're like very playful and they're very vulnerable. And then you start to get close to it and then it poofs into a dragon and you are like, I'm, this is hilarious. What is happening right now in my mind? Um, we have this visionary energy and I feel like I'm getting like just a lot of like just visions that are like coming across my mind right now. But, um, it's almost like, you know, 
take like a fairy tale archetype. So I'm seeing like a knight, you know, who's climbed to the top of the castle and, you know, then all of a sudden the princess and the dragon are the same thing. It's like, how are you gonna be both of these right now? You're really out here doing the most. It's it's not necessary. You could just stop doing that. You know, you could just stop being the dragon. I'm just seeing him sit down now and just set his sword to the side and just like shaking his head and like laughing. Like, I'm not fighting that, you know? But I feel like that movie, How to, t how to um, Train Your Dragon, that might, um, I don't know, have some clues as to how to deal with this. Cause that's what I feel like it is. Like you're gonna, you're gonna get this person in their adult, like be, to be able to hold it. It's like a not being able to hold it. That's what it is. Um, because something will happen and then poof, it puts this person in their child form, but then they start getting scared and vulnerable. So then poof, they're in the dragon form. It's like this over correction and it's like almost instantaneous. And so it's hard to really get a read here on this person. But with you, you're, I think you can, um, you know, I think you've got what the stuff here. That's why you're so curious or that's why you're very interested in this. And I feel like there's some sort of a connection because I'm hearing how to tame your dragon. So it, th maybe this is your person in some way, like your soulmate and um, whatever this is. Maybe this, I feel for a lot of you though, this is, this is an adult. This is like your person, but it's like there's an equality and element within you that it's like going through this process with this person is going to end up um, clicking things in for you about your own self. So this whole process is sensed here by this person. Now, okay, what is it that makes you different? Like what is it that they appreciate? Because some of you guys, you're like this person, I think you feel this person doesn't recognize your intelligence, doesn't recognize um, your skillfulness, uh, and what it is that you bring to the table, your insights, that they don't appreciate your insights or something like that, that they don't recognize you because you're showing up as a, an authority here. There's very much a teacher-student dynamic that's going on here. Ah, and if there isn't, I feel like there should be, that's gonna help put this person at ease because the way that you can kind of calm this dragon, the way you can kind of, yeah, like soothe this is actually through their mind. Some of you are trying, I don't think it's maybe your natural inclination, but you're trying to connect with your emotions and then like put that out here. And that may be one of the reasons this person's so confusing is because like um, the way to comfort them is in their mind. Um, and so if, if you start just being very transparent about what it is that you're doing to whatever degree you feel like you can be. And some of you are worried that because you're coming up as like very, very, very skillful. Okay, you've got mercury here three times and like in something. And maybe some of you feel like this person just wouldn't understand, you know, on an intellectual level. Um, I'm hearing the word jargon. So maybe um, you can sprinkle in jargon with this person because that's going to initiate this like sniffing out process that needs to happen. So, and I'm just seeing you like offer up some, like, I don't know, just take this as an example. Like you're trying to feed a horse or something. So you like, put grain in your hands and then you put like three jargon things in there that are like special treats. You don't overdo it. It's not a handful of it, but you just, here you go. And then this person can ask you what it is because here's the thing about this person, right? They're crazy smart and they're not showing you that. And I do feel it's a bit of a strategy with this person where they like to present smaller than they actually are just to see if you treat them like they're dumb or um, I don't know how, just to see how you respond to someone who is str smaller than they actually are. It's almost so that they can trust themselves because they know that they bring more to the table than what they're showing you. So if it needs to be dealt with, like you don't know the full picture of what they bring to the table so then they can cut you off pretty easy, right? With the swords energy. But notice this, notice how we skipped one. We went from the page to the queen, skipping the knight. And we did that in the, the suit of swords. So this person's incredibly mentally dexterous is what I'm hearing. Like where most people, like they'll start here with a subject and then over time they're gonna end up like here. When I'm hearing, there's something here about a latch, okay? Like, um, I'm talking about like, think of a baby, like feeding, a latch. Once they get the latch, then their learning curve goes here from here all the way up to here. There's trauma here with this person. That's what you're looking at. It doesn't look, if you think this person's like emotionally unstable or something, I mean, they're presenting that way, but it's, it's a dance. It's like, um, 
there's a certain amount of consciousness to it and there's a certain amount of unconsciousness to it, but they're not like their emotions are going to level out whenever they feel safe. That's what it is. They don't feel safe. And this definitely goes back to childhood here for this person. Um, and I'm hearing oral stage, like the oral stage is the very first stage. So that's pretty bad, you know, where, um, they never felt safe. They never felt secure. I'm hearing they never got a latch right to that nurturing energy. So it could have, that could have been a literal thing. Um, but it, it had like very tangible results here on this person where they just, they, they can't get a latch. So I'm hearing manager expectations with this person. If they couldn't get a latch in their early home environment with the people that were supposed to love, care, protect, and guide them in this world, then to expect them to form a latch with you, especially quickly, um, is going to cause more harm than good. Yeah. Now I'm hearing I don't want to say what I'm hearing, but, um, suffice it to say, I feel like the metaphor of that is that there's a risk of, okay, I'm just going to say it. It's nothing like too bad, but I'm hearing ectopic pregnancy, which for some of you, maybe that was an element here in your situation with this person, but that would be very, very few of you. I'm more getting the metaphor of that where there's like that pregnancy has happened, but it hasn't happened in the right place. It's not gotten to the uterus, you know? And, um, so don't, this is like metaphorically speaking, do not fertilize this person before it's you're where you think you need to be. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's just how it's coming through. So, um, like don't get ahead of yourself. Don't think that, um, you're trusted when you're not like if, if you, if that makes sense. Um, now, okay. So we still haven't gotten to why you are appreciated. And like I said, it's not going to come off as though you're appreciated here at first. So if you're in the early stages of this relationship with this person, then you're getting a lot of like standoffishness. You might even be, um, categorizing this as some type of an oppositional energy. I'm not getting that, you know, tarot happens on a gradient. So only take what resonates for you. You know, the truth of your situation, right? I can only get the, the, the tempo here of the, of the collective, um, and then allow the bell curve to kind of fall around it. So place yourself there as you need to. But what I'm getting from this person is it's less of like a uh, oppositional energy and they're in their process. This is what I meant at the beginning where it's almost like the two of you are speaking different languages to one another because this person is trying for you. Pile number three, they really are, but they, they can't, um, drop their defenses. They can't, right? It's this, Picture this person in your mind, like always, I feel like as a child that sits next to a dragon, um, and they're, they formed like some kind of crazy bond, you know, between the two of them and they shape shift between one another. That's this person you're dealing with. There's, there is a split in their soul a little bit because, um, I'm hearing that they were, you know, what do they call it when you're like frozen at an age, um, stunted, not that that's, there's a different word that I, they're like frozen, which trauma does that trauma will freeze you at a certain age. And this person is very much frozen in their early home environment. And it's this split sort of an energy and language is a trigger. Okay. How you use your language is, is a big trigger here for this person. Um, I'm so sorry. I know we're going to get to what they appreciate about you. There's just so many messages and they're like, cause I feel like this person has presented as a type of conundrum for you. Um, and spirit really, really, really wants this to get on board here between the two of you. Cause this is strong soulmate energy. And I feel like you both have this like medicine here from, for one another, but, but you're so opposite. And we see this message come out in the cards recently, but okay. So language is a trigger. Ambiguous language is a trigger for this person because they don't know if they can trust you. Remember I said the way to this person's like trust energy is through their mind. Be clear, be direct, be competent, which you are, be confident, which you are. So I just feel like for some of you, yeah, I'm just, I keep seeing this vision of a knight, like capable, dexterous, covered in armor, you know, has a sword and, you know, a knight knows how to do knight stuff, you know? Um, but then you get up there and you see that it's a kid and you're, and you're like, I'm not fighting that. So you like, you just sit down and you put your sword down and you just watch it and you're laughing and you're like, Hey, um, where's your mom? And then it's like a dragon comes out and then breathes at you. And you're like, nobody prepared me for this. Okay. I was prepared to fight a dragon, not a dragon child. And I don't know how I feel about this. So it's throwing you off balance. That something about this person's energy throws you off of your, it interrupts your flow state. 
Some of you are very good at getting into flow state, especially in regards to a skill that you have. And this skill could be anything, but I actually think you're pretty multi-talented, which is good. That's why um, you're a match for this person, because this person's little child is incredibly talented too, very multi-talented. That's why um, I think you were sent in is because as dexterous as this person is in there because this is like a shadow form of it right it's getting um expressed in like a shadow way you can almost see it and you can relate to it because you are that dexterous but it's in a conscious way in a way you've built yourself up so you're a match for this person if they shift out you can follow i just feel like there's um like the smallness, the childlike quality of this person, you are you don't wanna be direct with it, but it's almost like, and, and this is true for children as well, when you are direct with a child and you just tell them exactly what they can do, exactly like exactly what to expect, that's what you do with a child to help you know bring them into a container. Um, that's, that's what I feel like this person needs, like a container. They need to be communicated to very directly. And I think that's maybe a wound from this person's past where like, you know um, how some people think kids are like dumb, not that they're like just little growing people that are underdeveloped. They think they're stupid. So they like talk things in front of them that they shouldn't. And then, but the kid knows or like they remember it and um, they don't really know what to do with it, that kind of thing. So this ambiguous language, because cancer is an energy that moves side to side. It never moves direct at, at whatever it wants. And this person sees you kind of doing that. Like you're treating them with kid gloves is what I'm hearing. And they, that makes them, that's what's initiating this. And you mean well by it. And this person doesn't know what you mean by it. If there's any written language or communication here, there's, there, this person might be worried that you don't like to be held accountable. Like with your words, you put them out there in an ambiguous fashion so that you don't wanna be held accountable. And maybe um, I'm getting that some of you guys just might not like bureaucracy, which I think this person, if you just said that, they'd be like, okay, cool, like me either, you know? And then you can move forward, but you have to understand that that has been, that energy has been weaponized um, against this person, this ambiguous sort of double speak, um, emotional double speak language. Another thing that's coming through is this person is afraid that you are going to ask them about their past or about their family and they don't want to talk about it. And I don't know, I, you look skillful here in, in something and gestalt therapy is coming to my mind, right? That gestalt approach in um, therapy, which if you want a trip and you want a, your mind to bend around what the heck is reality, look up a gestalt therapy session. There's like famous videos, but the whole thing is you don't actually talk about the past or the family. Uh, that therapist just points out everything that you're doing in the moment. They'll be like, why are you tapping your foot? You know? And it's like, well, because I'm nervous. And it's like, well, why are you nervous? Oh, well, because you're just staring at me, you know, with your pen. <laughs> and oh, okay, well, why does that make you nervous? Like, you know, and you just keep, you just explore everything around, like in that specific moment, that might be another key, like keeping it in the moment, keep it fresh. How you doing? How you, you know, like, um, and, and again, like this very mental energy. Some of you are starting to feel overwhelmed, but I feel like, um, I think that actually this is your normal, natural nature, like what this person needs, but you don't think it's what this person needs. But spirit is saying, trust that you're paired up with this person because I did it, <laughs> you know, like, because I know what I'm doing. And because this person can outrun a lot of people, they can, and you both have this quality. So if you can get this person online, then look, the two of you are on equal terms. And I feel like there's something here that you're going to get in return. Um, now, um, Finally, let's talk about what, why you're so like, why you're such a good match for this person, and um, what this person appreciates in you ultimately. Because every the reason this person's on on guard with you is actually, um, first of all, there's a, an impersonal quality, right, where they're just trying to protect themselves. They're just trying to defend themselves, but there's a personal aspect to this, and everything that is personal to you, pile number three, is a compliment. It's a compliment to you. So this appreciation energy, just like this um, skillful, talented energy, this shapeshifter energy almost that I'm getting, this visionary energy within this person, I think that both of you are like crazy intuitive. Um, and maybe you unlock this for each other somehow, but um, it's, 
it's all bound up together like these two things here within this person so you have mercury here three times and mercury in the myth there is no door that mercury cannot get into even the door to hades no one gets into hades but mercury can because it's skillful it's dexterous in its language with its hands it's just it's kind of a swiss army knife of an energy that's how you are presenting in this person's mind there seems to be a subconscious recognition that if you want to get past their shell their boundaries what they use to keep themselves safe that you can do it so i think another big thing big aspect with this is that you if you just show and, and again this this comes with directness hey like i i know i think i maybe make you a little nervous i'm not trying to um i want to be able to like help you or like i don't want you to feel that way around me i don't know how to do that so i'm just gonna sit right here basically you're just sitting right outside the door and this person's gonna respect you i kind of feel like that's gonna be a quick turnaround because they know that you could get in if you wanted to and if you don't and you just choose to respect them and their boundaries well they don't know what to do with that they never had that before um so that's one way that you're different and because I think one thing that you have to teach this person is that just because somebody is bigger, just because somebody has power over you doesn't mean that they are going to abuse it. And further, it can mean that they can use their power and their superior knowledge or experience or skill set to help other people. This person maybe i think if you asked them that they would say like of course but i mean on an emotional level because this person's emotions are static is what i'm hearing it's like there's something about it that's confusing to them because they couldn't trust a family situation and they refuse to look at that directly um so they i don't know there's something about you where you, the existence of you and how you are with your strength energy is a conundrum to this person they're like what's your angle what is it that you want yeah because with this poofing right into the child and the dragon now i'm hearing from aladdin it's like poof what do you need poof what do you need poof what do you need so this person's like what is it that you want you know um but i think you're kind of coming at this as altruistic you're big where this person's small also you're perceptive you're very very perceptive and this person actually likes that but again, you can you can see how they wouldn't like that at first, right? Oh gosh, like I can't evade this person. They're so perceptive, um, you know? Like you can see how if this person's in their defensive energy, that would super suck. But then as things progress, and as you start to um, be able to trust, the fact that you're perceptive, this person is going to really, really like. I'm just seeing like, like an animal that has its fur all like, you know, and sometimes like when you're petting your dog and you're just like, rrr, rrr, you know, and you just, mush them all up and then their hair's like every which way it's almost like you come in and you um like after that and you just like pet all their fur back down in the right direction and this person's like oh that feels nice you know um like oh this goes over here and that goes over there you know um like that's kind of what it is that you're doing with this person I feel like so um yeah you're seen as somebody who's very very skillful you're seen as someone who can teach them things i feel like a big part of this is getting this person in the moment getting them in their body but don't confuse this for what i was saying because the way to to calm this person and to get them to kind of let their guard down is through their mental energy but you don't want to keep them there okay so it's like i think there's something about you where you're very tactile or you like to do something with your physical body or um and you can very much pull this person in the moment and that's the sweet spot and if, i just feel like if you you can drop this person into their body um or in into the moment you know through some kind of like tactile activity or something like you know i'm seeing like somebody going skiing or like um i don't know you can get them out of their head space because once this person if they stay in that head space for too long they do this oscillating thing and it's child dragon child dragon can i trust them no i can't can i trust them no i can't like it's just it's back and forth and um yeah so Again, I don't like, I'm telling you all of this so you can trust yourself. I think that's mostly it. So you can trust that who you are fundamentally, how you have, maybe you um, also vibe with like having to overcome certain things. Um, and, but the way you've done it and the way you've built yourself, it's a perfect match 
to this person. But I think I said this in pile number two. So for some of you guys, if you want to know, um, the impact that this person, Ooh, yeah, that's it. The impact this person could have for some of you could be pile number two. Um, because I'm seeing that this almost looks like the two of you, you're so different that you don't go together but then you fit together perfectly. I'm just seeing two puzzle pieces where they both look extremely different from one another in their shape and everything, but they have a side that just like fits right together. And that's, there's something like, I don't know, like a piece falling into place. Cause I'm hearing this person go, Oh <laughs> yeah. Like there's something, there's something, and I don't know what it is. I just feel like it's your overall approach to life. This isn't something where you need to get all weird and schemey, you know? I think if you're in your schemey energy, um, and if you're scheming, even if it's like to get around this person's defenses or to help this person, you have altruistic scheming, right? Like if that's your vibe with this person, it's still the vibe of scheme and they are very adept at picking up scheme. And so, you know, there's an understanding, I think, in this person, because like I said, they're, they're kind of wicked smart. There's an understanding that, um, yeah, spirit saying emphasis on wicked, that this smart energy can really turn on this person. I mean, seeing the snake eating its own tail, it can become self carnivorous, um, is what I'm getting and just eat away at this person now. Um, but I feel like there's something about, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, I mean, this person's just incredibly defensive, I guess is what I'm getting. Oh yeah, this, this scheming energy. What you want to do is be direct. That's what makes this person feels com feel comfortable because it was this scheming energy that, and then that casts doubt and then this person can't get out of their mind. So if you're just confident in what you're doing and you understand that this person's kind of sniffing around you, but you under you also understand you're the bigger dog in the room and like just to let them sniff around you. And I think this will be intellectual at first, then, um, they're going to, they're that they're, they're going to be fine. It's like less doing, less doing on your part. You don't have to scheme. Definitely don't scheme. Just be you because you're not simple in your mind. Pile number three, not at all. Like you're very skillful. You're very developed. I think, like I said, there's something about you that can just get into flow state. That flow state energy is going to be insanely calming to this person. They're just going to sense it on you. This person's crazy intuitive. I think so are you. And so you have to understand the conversation that you're having. It's going to, Oh, here's, here's the key. Here's the key. It's going to fall flat with words. It'll fall flat. You're going to try because you're like, well, what words can I say? You can't say any words to put this person at ease. No words that you say. You could say, I love you. You could send them an I love you text every hour on the hour for the next 14 years. And it's still not going to mean much to this person. But this flow state energy, you're going to be like fascinated how quick this turns around because you're having an energetic conversation with this person. That's the key to understanding them. You're having, this person doesn't really quite care. I'm from Missouri. That's called the show me state. This person has a show me attitude. They really don't care like what it is that you want to say, what, what words you want to ping around the room. Cause words haven't really had much meaning because they've been around people who have said they, their actions didn't show that they loved them, but then they were like, we're family. I love you. Um, put your guard down. And then they would, and then they would get like popped in the mouth. And then this person would be like, but you said you love me. And then now your, your actions aren't reflecting that. So you speak to this person through actions, through flow state, through being upfront and direct and not scheming around them. So I think a, an understanding you need to have is there are no words you can say to this person. Words are not the thing. Energy is the thing. So I don't know if, I don't know what, what relationship this is, honestly. Cause like I said, there is an aspect of like student teacher and it'll flip too. So this person, um, once this person flips into their adult state, like, uh, energetically around their emotional space, I think, um, you're going to get a lot of fulfillment from being around this person. Like there, this is, um, this is something that's going to give back to you immensely. It's going to be very, very nourishing. Yeah. Um, I'm confused about what kind of a connection this is, to be honest. I think like a lot of different people chose a lot of different things, but I, I want to say this. Okay. Um, if this is a sexual connection that you have with this person, actually, and even if it isn't, um, because this person is stuck in their oral stage of development, you want to keep their mouth busy. So I don't know, like, so for instance, if this is like, I don't know, uh, like a platonic kind of relationship and this person comes into your space, it's a good idea to have, um, like hard candies on 
like a table or something, like get a cream saver. And um, I wonder if they still make those. Anyways, you go pick out your own hard candy. Don't let me tell you what to get. Get a cream saver. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, um, and pop one in your mouth. Make it the cool thing to do, <laughs> you know, because if you're just like, yeah, have a hard candy and you're not doing it, it's going to create that clinical space that I was talking about before with the gestalt therapy of like, well, you're making me nervous. You and your pen just staring at me. Don't create that kind of dynamic. It's like you enter your own flow state and allow this person to follow you because I'm just seeing like you are like this big wolf or something and you're walking through do, 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 and you know this person's following you, but they're just kind of like scampering behind, just just watching you watching what you're doing. And if you dig a hole over by a tree, then they're gonna try to dig a hole behind you. You know, like I think this person, they learn from, they're very tactile and, and observant. Yeah. So you have to understand almost how to feed this person information and knowledge because they're skittish, but they're tough. And the two, I feel like there's two, there's like the baby child and the big dragon. And you're like, in your mind, you're like, stop breathing fire. I just, um, stop breathing fire and just get in your child state and I'll help you. But this person cannot leave their child state undefended. These two things go together, right? Um, cause their child was unattended in the past, their inner child. So they've built, you have to understand this is like an old, okay, this person has emotional currents. That's what this, this is like, and I'm telling you, it's simple. Get, when you get in your flow state, you're going to naturally avoid these emotional currents, but there are em old emotional currents from this person's early, um, um, early childhood life that you can easily like get into. And that's scheming energy, even if you mean well by it. It's one of them where it, it makes them unsure. It makes them feel defensive and then possibly cut you off with the queen of swords. Cause I'm almost getting the, the queen of swords is this person's dragon. But yeah, if you were the hierophant, see how the hierophant, her eyes are closed, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So I didn't quite say the, in a, this uncomfortable thing that I wanted to say is sexual. So if this is a sexual connection, you want to keep this person's mouth busy. <laughs> and some of you are like, listen, I mean, I, if I, I'll take one for the team, I guess like, yeah. Um, you just want to tell this person what to do with their mouth, keep their mouth engaged. A lot of kissing, have something, um, I don't know, put your fingers in their mouth, something. Um, and another thing, because that's going to get them into their body and it's that latch energy. I don't know. There's something about that. And then also, um, especially if there's a female, um, breasts, that's a way that I don't know. I'm just seeing like whiting out their mind or something like that. That's, that's another, that's another key. It just, there you go. Um, so yeah. What does this person appreciate about you? It's truly like, I feel this is what's crazy. There's this like mirrored wound and I'm seeing a, a mirror that's just like, fragmented or something, but cause you, I feel like it's, you're getting triggered. I feel like you might have a wound around not being seen or appreciated for the intelligence and the competence that you bring to the table. Because a lot of you look like you're easy going, you're easy breezy. I think you like to connect with people. You like, you like there to be a flow and flow energy for this person is there's a real danger of getting sucked into an emotional current. But if you can show this person, this beautiful flow energy that you have, um, then it's going to really, really help. But I feel like it, it triggers your wound of not being seen, not being appreciated, not being seen as skillful. Um, it makes you feel unappreciated. And then it makes you, I don't know, like I'm just seeing someone who's like baffled, you know? Um, and, and it throws you off of your game because you want people to, who want to work with you, who see like you the value that you bring to the table. And this person does, it just gets channeled wrong. It gets channeled as a defensiveness because this person, there's a huge acknowledgement, okay, um, of your skill set here. Huge. That's almost the problem. And that's weird because usually when we meet somebody who's competent, it almost puts your mind at ease. You're like, oh, thank God, somebody who knows what they're doing, somebody who knows what they're talking about. I could just buckle myself in here. That's so rare, you know, when that happens. And for this person, you being so dexterous is like, um, I feel like whoever hurt this person in the past was incredibly dexterous with their words or their emotional space. There was a really corrupt mothering energy. 
Um, and it doesn't have to come from a mother, but it's this like really corrupt nurturance energy because some of you just want to nurture this person and I'm hearing your help just hurts. Your love just hurts. Please stop. I'm hearing, please stop, please stop. Like, and I just kind of want to cry. Like, um, I'll do it. I'll do it. This person has a real, I'll just do it myself. Like energy to them. And yeah, so, um, but you're seeing, that's what I'm saying is like, this appreciation energy is just, it's blocked. It's like, it's, it's blocked. But like I said, you could have this person just eating out of the palm of your hand because you're um, not simple in your mind, but you're simple in your intentions. You're pure, you're pretty straightforward in your intentions. All you have to do is, you, you don't have to manufacture anything. Don't manufacture anything with this person. All you have to do is just let that side of you show. It's already there. Yeah, so um, this person likes your skills. They like your perceptiveness. Um, you very well could have academic degrees here, but um, it, that's almost not what's being appreciated. There's a different kind of intelligence of you just like picking up on things. And, um, and this is like in the moment, but it's also like little bits of bobs of information everywhere that you go. Um, they like that. And it's almost like, I feel like your connection with this person could just change everything for them. And that again, mirrors pile number two, because that was a relationship that could really change everything. And that's what this is. I feel like there's a real change in fortune here for this person. This and the wheel of fortune card is the divine hand of fate. This is like God energy. And so it's like God brought the two of you together is kind of how I'm reading this. And then there's like a trust that the obstacle is the way. Trust that the obstacle is away because there's something about this person's defensiveness that you're categorizing as an oppositional, as, a, as they're blocking you. That's their process. They're actually, they, they haven't put down their process because if they did, they would walk away from you. But if they're fighting you, if they're sniffing you around, if they're asking you questions, it, and it might seem like they're challenging you or that they're questioning your skill or ability, um, your skills and talents have never one time been called into question. You have one obstacle and one obstacle only for this person, and it is trust. It's just, it's trust. Your character. Your character is what they don't know about. Your character is what they don't know if they can trust. Because you radiate a type of power you both do. This person's power is erratic, but it doesn't need to be. You're going to bring it online. And when you bring it online, it's going to change everything. Because this person has been on the back foot their whole life. I'm hearing like anemic or just like there's a, there's a weakness to this person, but it's not natural. It was put there. They felt like they had to put parts of themselves to sleep in order to um, survive this. Um, the things that they wanted emotionally for their own nurturance, like, um, well, I guess I just am not going to have a family. I'm hearing it's family. It's like this person, I think, ooh, I want to cry. This person has just been like, I guess I want a family, but I guess I'm just never going to have one. Like, and, and this person is like kind of put that to bed. Um, and there's something about like something here where you're going to integrate something. It's going to close out a huge cycle that has been holding this person back. <sighs> And yeah, this person has locked themselves in, in the tower, in the castle. And surprise, surprise, they are the princess, but they're also the dragon. And I want to caution you away from rescuer energy because rescuer energy is going to mess this up. So some of you guys are, are um, you're going to, you're going to be like, I see the princess. The princess always needs rescuing. But then, oh, this person's the dragon. And then this person's the persecutor. But I think this person is trying to keep you out. They're not trying to draw you in. They're, they're, they're trying, this person like isolates. Yeah, certainly parts of themselves, they isolate. So you radiate a type of power and this person's like, if that gets near me, it's going to do what it says on the tin. And I'm not sure, like, you know, this person kind of senses how big the transformation is. And, and when they've given over the reins to other people who promised to nurture them or care for them or love them in the past, that got misused it hurt them a lot and you have all this power energy and you're saying that you're going to nurture them which other people have said before so that's how you're different is you're simple and you're pure in your intentions okay um so you're not different in the fact that you're saying that you want to nurture this person i think you are different that you actually want to nurture this person and that you have to let them 
figure that out for themselves and be patient because this oppositional energy is their process. They're actually in process. They are, believe it or not, I'm seeing like a wall between you and this person is on the other side, like tentatively and with shaky fingers, like putting a rock down and putting a rock down and they're giving you a little more, a little more, and they're watching what you do with it. They're watch if you run, that's that's what I was getting before. If if you that with that ectopic pregnancy, I'm so sorry. I don't know why that's coming out like that. But um if you do that, then and it, it, and it, it and you do what you do and it and, and it's gonna latch, it's gonna take, but it's not gonna take in the right place, and that's gonna be very dangerous for this person. Um so they're just a little bit at a time and they need to, to keep both, you're both bringing certain things and it's keeping you on the path, right? But I'm just seeing this person's little shaky hands like, okay, all right, all right. And I'm telling you, if you, if you get, if you start to see this and you're like bolt towards it, this person's going to clam right back up. So I just feel like you need to do your own thing. You set the tone energetically. Be the leader and be confident, be competent, be direct. Um, make it clear that you're not trying to like override this person's judgment or emotions. Make it, make it clear that if they have a question, they can ask it. They can be direct with you and you're going to be direct with them. You establish that with this person and, and you're going to get far with this person. But you being in your own flow, in your own flow state. And I see how he's like kind of looking behind like, oh, you're still here. That's what's going to weirdly make this person feel comfortable. Yeah. They feel like the, your relationship has kind of stalled. And um, they may have done this to you. Um, but they're thinking about you. They're thinking about, they don't know about you. That's what I'm getting. So you're still in kind of a hopeful situation, pile number three, because they haven't completely made up their mind about you. But there is ambiguous energy around the way you're communicating. And that's what's throwing this person. Because I feel like, again, you're trying to treat them with kid gloves, but you really should be confident and direct. You know, not in a way that's hurting, but when you know and you, you're sure, you know, and you, again, like call it out. Just be like, I'm sure about that this is the right thing to do or this is the right approach to take. Cause there's a teacher student vibe here. For some of you, this is like matchy matchy. It's pretty direct. Like you guys are, I'm really having a hard time picking up on what the dynamic is here, but it's making me think that it's multiple things. Your friends, you could be lovers um, or family members or something, but there's like this overlap, which is, I think, really good. It, it speaks to a type of uh, insane compatibility here between the two of you. But you're almost feeling like, oh God, I'm just, I'm at a loss with this person and we're so incompatible and I have to contort myself. No, you don't. That's you just, that's your synthesis of their behavior. But spirit is saying, no, I brought them to you because they need your medicine. That's what they need. And everybody else can't like match them, you know? So yeah, I hope this made sense, pile number three. This is interesting. So if you're having frustration with this person, um, all the, the capacity for that frustration, confusion, triggering, um, mirrored triggers that are going on, that is the capacity for love because I, this is all rooted in the Ace of Cups. Be simple. Allow You have this beautiful simplicity to you where you can just be in the moment and enjoy that and you can get in flow state. And that's this, that's exactly the medicine that this person needs. And I just feel like once this clicks in, it's going to really just take off. Another thing that this person really appreciates or will appreciate about you immensely is that you have the capacity to envision what's not yet conceivable to others. And you have a willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain. And this person, uh, who has experienced, I think a lot of manipulation, they, um, they get tricked into being small so that they can get overtaken. That's another thing. Um, so they don't want to be small. So you're like, stop with the dragon. And this person's like, that's what they all say, <laughs> you know? Um, but so there's no, you have no hidden agenda with this person. And I think you, you go your own way. You build your life the way that you want. And that's what this person wants. But they, um, they're scared that they're going to get like knocked down. That's what this change in fortune is. It's an immense confidence. 
Yeah, it's like you're getting, I wanna say it's this person's masculine energy back online, getting them to be able to trust that they can defend their perimeter and they don't need to oscillate between child and dragon. So I feel like I've talked for an insane amount of time, but I hope this makes somewhat of sense. You have to trust this high level soulmates, you guys, pile number three, high, 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 stupid high um, level soulmates. I feel like you're doubting that because, um, because you see that this person is small or wounded. They're not like incompetent. And I really, I keep getting the message that you're just going to be so surprised this person's rocket climb. Like when, when they have this aha moment, which you're going to bring them this like, Oh, I keep hearing that from this person. Um, somebody's going to click in. I feel like also some of you should watch that movie, how to train your dragon. There's clues in there because this is your dragon. And, and you're going to keep this dragon too. Like, um, I, this person's going to be like immensely loyal to you. Very, very loyal. Once this, whatever this is. Um, and I just feel like the two of you could be working together. Like you're, you make a good, good, good team pile number three. You really do. And, but you both have to respect, um, and honor that what's opposite in one another. Some of you are stuck as well. You need your own special key to get through something. And this person is it working through your, whatever this is like, that's gonna, that's where your key is as well. So, um, it's going to be returned. Funny enough. I feel like this person might be hesitant, um, and petulant with you because they don't think they could ever return something. Again, this is remnants of this. Um, I'm hearing covert contracts. There were covert emotional contracts with the family. That's what it is. Covert emo. If, I'm gonna, listen, I birthed you into the world, right? I, I feed you every single day, so you're gonna do this, this, and this for me. No questions asked. And this person just felt overwhelmed by that at a, at a young age. So if there, and that's what this, you're simple in your intentions. There's no con covert contracts with you. I think you're actually very, um, what you see is what you get type of a situation in, in regards to your intentions. Um, or you have the capacity to be that, and perhaps that's a key for you is, is just reminding yourself that that's, who you are and you create a type of liquid luck for yourself when you're just direct and straight up and pure and simple in your intentions. Yeah, because you have to be that way with this person. So it's getting that part of you back online. I feel that's a big key here for you guys as well. So this was fascinating, pile number three. And if you're curious about what else like this person could bring into your life, um, especially if this is a romantic connection, um, or you feel it could be, you might want to watch pile number two because that, that message was all about like not trying to control. Um, and maybe you've experienced people trying to control you as well. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Pile number three, if that resonated, please like comment and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.